Hi, welcome to Hyperion Hype Club. My name is McKenna and I love the Kingdom Keepers books by Ridley Pearson. Join me as we discuss this series and others published by Disney Hyperion Books. Let's get into it. Hi everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Hyperion Hype Club, where we are going over chapters 8 through 15 of Peter and the Starcatchers. The first in that series by Ridley Pearson and Dave Barry, published in 2004. So just a little reading update from me. I have not had the chance to start reflection yet in the few days since I recorded the last episode. I'm slowly but surely working my way through The Origin of Species as my current bedtime read. Perhaps I'll start reflection next week. Not saying I'll have or The Origin of Species done by then but have that as my daytime read because there are a few times a day when I prefer to record this. So if I finish the section of that and I won't be recording right away, but I still want to read, I'll read Reflection. It's kind of weird. Um, normally it would also be my bedtime read if I didn't have the origin of species as well. And maybe if I get like re through recording, Maybe another episode of this next week, I'll start Reflection anyway and just put The Origin of Species on pause. I don't know, but yeah, that's just my thought process right now. I did rewatch Mulan this week, though, so that original Disney story is fresh in my mind at the moment. Anyway, moving on to the captain's log for chapters 8 through 15. Preston and Harbuckle escaped their capsized dory and are rescued by the crew of the Neverland, ultimately admitting that they're from Black Stash's ship, the Sea Devil. There's gossip about the chest and flying rat. Peter and Alf talk about how they share the belief that there was an actual flying rat. Molly sends a message to her father via porpoises. James and Peter saw this, with Peter later confronting Molly who says she was just trying to imitate their noises. Peter doesn't buy it. Molly's father received the message from the porpoises, who weren't able to relay that the trunk is what's on Molly's ship. Peter and Al form an alliance to seek out what's in the trunk. Aster, aka Molly's dad, and the black chest set off in a dory while the crews of the wasp and sea devil prepare to fight. Rescuing Bingham caused the dory to be brought in by the pirates, who discovered that the chest was filled with sand and not valuables of some sort. Captain Scott and his men ultimately surrendered to the Black Stash, and that is where we left off this section. For references, I didn't notice any references in this section. I looked up Tinkerbell's eye color, and it's blue, not green, like Molly and her father's eyes. Green to Disney is usually an evil color, but this book was written by non-Disney people, so that's likely not the case here. I do have quite a number of random thoughts this week, though. According to my Kindle, uh, or the Kindle app on the phone, an off-highlight section of this book was Preston's thoughts about his wife. I don't know if it's important for some point, or to show that multiple men working on the Neverland are in similar situations, considering Captain Pembridge has a similar home situation. There's a character named Story in this book after Story Pearson, one of Ridley Pearson's daughters, and one of the people whom this book is dedicated to. Her name is also used for a Kingdom Keepers character and is in at least one of those dedications as well. I have some more thoughts about the potential flying rat. It's either um, a fairy and Molly knows it, Molly's a fairy and it was her, or the rat was able to fly from touching the chest. So yeah, those are three current theories that I have. So yeah, anything goes really. Okay, we gotta talk about the porpoises here. I mean, wow, I kind of love it. <laughs> as an animal person myself, it's definitely a clear sign that Molly is involved with the fantastical going stuff going on with the chest. I also agree that clicks are hard to do after spending time in South Africa and learning a few words in Osa. Oh, I'm not even sure if I pronounced that correctly since, again, clicks are hard. 
Also, where do I sign up for lessons on how to speak with purposes? Probably don't exist, but if I was in that world, I'll be like, where is it? Where did you learn that? Can I learn it too? Anyway, even though Aster didn't realize the black chest didn't contain what he thought it did, Slank clearly knows what's going on since he tries hard to keep it secured. And then I also noted a line that said that Aster, or two lines really, that said Aster had green eyes like his daughter. Okay, we've also got to talk about the ladies. Um, how was this allowed in the middle grade Disney book? Like, especially since there was an illustration of it in the book. I'm sorry you can hear, if you can hear that industrial rain. It's so annoying. It's middle of the day. You would be able to see if anyone was on the train tracks, I hope. Whatever. They're just warning people. Moving on. Why give fairies to an evil king? Like, this is a chest going from the queen to the king of Rundune, and he's like a slime ball and probably evil and stuff. So, why would the queen be sending him fairies or whatever is that valuable, magical in that chest? I don't give why you give the evil king that kind of power that could possibly give him more leverage to do more evil things. I also think there's a lot of ship lingo in this book for your average like middle grade middle schooler audience. Like I keep on having to like pull down the word to see what it means and like if you're reading a hard copy of this book or even reading it back in several for the first several years it was out when it after it came out in 2004. Like, you can just look it up. You'd have to go to a computer with slow Wi-Fi and look up everything. And it would just be confusing. Like, I just think, like, it, obviously, that's the lingo that these people use, I'm sure. Like, you're working on a ship, you're going to know the, di know the different parts of the ship. But you're just an average kid reading this book, you're not going to know the different parts of the ship. So it's like, uh... Anyway, I just thought I'd put that out there. Uh, another thing I want to put out, put out there is that I keep reading Smee's lines in his voice, and it's kind of fun. I also think that, like Aster recognized multiple times, Black Sash is good at his job. He makes a lot of smart decisions for his goals. I'm not saying they're good goals, but for his goals, yes. And speaking of Black Sash, I like the matching thought of Black Sash and Captain Scott. Nobody understands how hard it is being captain. I wonder if the two captains will ever talk about it or um, if the lines will be left at that. But yeah, those are my random thoughts. Now on to how am I enjoying this book so far? I enjoyed this section more than the last one. Perhaps it be it's because I don't really like Peter and there was a lot less of him in this section. And then the porpoises also helped as well as how chapter 15 was broken up as the authors jumped between perspectives, which I thought was done really well. It also helps that we are past the slower introductory phase of this novel. So yeah, I'm liking it better so far, and I am excited to keep going. I can't wait to keep reading. So speaking of continuing to read this book, next time we will be covering chapters 16 through 22, Please leave all of your random thoughts in the comments below or on the YouTube video or on Spotify. And Spotify episodes always have polls that you can participate in too. And random prompts in that question and answer box. But you can drop any comment that you want. And even, even constructive criticism on how I can improve this, please. Or if there are any references I missed, just anything. Please drop it down below. But also, please try to avoid spoilers in the comments, partially for me, partially for other people reading through this for the first time. But that is it. I will see you guys next week for chapters 16 through 22. See you real soon. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. Please remember to rate, review, subscribe, and follow. Also, please chat with me and other members of this club in the comments of the YouTube video. 
My other social media information and a link to the Long Distance Sisters podcast I am also part of will be below. Back in a whack.